guys what's going on welcome to a podcast odyssey again i've got jeff aka true knowledge and cybernetic shark guys what's going on it's going good let me see let me blow this up over here it can be better it can be better baby i'm on a podcast odyssey what, what, where, where, else, where else could the better spot be possibly on the mcu's bleeding edge of course talking about well, she hulk yeah. talking about the she hulk baby I, I, you know what? I, I actually like those episodes of the She-Hulk. I think they did doing a decent job so far, keeping it funny. I told you, Joey. I told you it was going to be a good show. It's pretty good, pretty good. Well, we're not talking about She-Hulk today, guys. We're going to talk about the never-ending story. La 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 la. I told people I was going to sing today, so I might have to, you know, sing throughout it. But anyway, um, I'm going to play a trailer. I'm using my hands a lot. Oh, Cyber, did you pause? Did your screen just pause with you throwing the thumbs up? It sure did. It looks awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys pull, you guys both paused. I did not. I was still on my end, still fine. It was you two that paused. I guess we each, that's what happened to each of us. <laughs> I see it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of freezing going on in my uh, in my thingy here. That just sounded weird, but that's okay. The audio is good, and the the audio is what's really important here, you know, because uh, later on this goes to Apple and Spotify, and then it, you know people can hear it later on, so they don't see all the freezing from the live podcast. So we're good. What's going on, Drunk Wizard? Hi, Liz. You're supposed to be uh, going to bed. Uh, anyway, you know what? Even though we're having some freezing, let's uh, let me see if I can play this trailer and uh, see if it'll work. Hold on, let's see here. Because it might not work. Oh my God, I used to hum this song all the time. Well, and look, oh, and like, what do you know? Look at Jeff. Of course, his uh, his thing with that doodad cut out. <laughs> Hi, 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 Trisha. Hi, Liz. Excuse me. Excuse you. There. Did Daddy just send me to bed? No, I didn't send anybody to bed. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to a podcast Odyssey where uh, it looks like the why is it cutting out so much? That is bothering me. And then Jeff has disappeared. But anyway, Cyber, before you, you know, you're you're usually my guy that talks about what the movie's about. Let's just watch the trailer. Let everybody see the trailer, remember it, get a little, little refresher on it. You know, and for those who haven't seen it, you know, they get to see the trailer. So uh, hopefully it doesn't freeze too much. If it does, I apologize, apologize, guys. Just go to YouTube and 
type in never ending story and you will find it but let's see what what it does here if it's if it's that horrible i probably won't do it i'll probably just stop it altogether what's happening oh wait at first i thought you were talking about like what's happening to the podcast but i don't think you're talking about that i think you're talking about uh how we're doing okay good night forever no there's no good nights forever it's never for uh never good night forever. Oh what Lord, is yeah, the like, secret of this enchanted book. You know what? Let's just listen to it. What okay. wonders are hidden within its pages? Guys, what we're just listening to it. What magical spell does it cast on all who read it? What is the <laughs> secret of the never-ending story? All right, you know what? That did not work out at all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do this real quick. Hold on. We are going to... I'm going to have to take that out and remove from the studio. I feel like it is just slowing up my uh, internet or something. And that's not going to work here. Let's see. Let's get rid of this on the computer real quick. No, we don't want to do that. We'll get rid of that. Anyway. Okay. You know what? I got rid of that video on here, and now nobody's freezing. So, hi, everybody. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you only hear audio? I know, because it, like, froze when I tried to play the video. As soon as I inserted the uh, trailer, it, like, made everything freeze on here. What a sorry, sorry app. Why is it doing that? Jeff, tell me why. Can you explain why? I don't know what to tell you. Are you talking about StreamYard? Yeah, why did it do that? Did you see what it did to me? You see you what it's see, doing to me? Can you see your Wi-Fi connection right now on the screen? I'm not hooked up to Wi-Fi, sir. I'm hooked up. Oh, okay. Are I'm, you are you are you Ethernet are you Ethernet up or what? I'm Etherneting it up. Okay. Um. Well, all I can say is just that in the pro, in the past, whenever I mean, I've never really had any issues playing that I can think of. Uh, I think Cyber would back me up on this. We've never had any problems playing trailers or like that and whatnot. With it's probably because I got really bad internet. Anyway, let's go back to the never-ending story, which what you guys came for. Uh, I'm going to go with Cyber. Cyber, tell us about the never-ending story. All right. So the never-ending story, 1984, came out. It is a German production. Actually, it's the very first English-speaking Did you say 84 or 94? 84. 84, okay. Yeah, 1984. It's the first English-language film that Wolfgang Peterson did. Uh, he actually just recently passed away about two weeks ago. Uh, he was 81. Uh, but basically, the premise of every story is the main character, Bastion, is basically running away from bullies. He goes into a bookshop, gets this book from this kind of creepy old man, and he goes to school and reads the book and is reading about the Nevering story. And throughout the Nevering story, basically he ends up kind of interjecting into the story himself while basically the people in the Nevering story are trying to save themselves from what is called the nothing. And the, pretty much the story is about, or the movie I should say, is about him bastion reading the book feeling what's going on in the book and dealing with his own demons in real life uh it's hmm. a really fantastic film yeah you know what um it, it, you know just watched it before got on to here so it's like like always like every time i try to do a podcast i try to like literally watch it before i start because it's like super fresh i think jeff did the same thing too right jeff you just saw it i mean probably. yeah but Literally, I mean, I uh, I think the, the the movie finished at like ten twenty two. <laughs> right, so literally right before we we started. All right, so Jeff, you've seen this before, right? Or this is your first time seeing it? I mean, that's one of the greatest things about this about doing this whole series of reviews is that I'm getting chances to watch and rewatch these films. Where the last time I probably watched this movie was legit, literally probably in the eighties, if not like ninety or ninety one. Like, that was the last time I've seen this movie. So, you know, like, um, it's very reminiscent to, like, sit and watch them now. You know, dec you know, two, three decades later almost or whatever, you know. Um, 
And of course, it's a little bit different to take them in as a 39 year old compared to like as a seven year old or eight year old or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, it's like, uh, you know, um, it's interesting. I mean, as we continue down the line and we pick some other different films, I'm sure there's probably going to be other ones where I haven't seen them in 20, 30 years and I'm going to be watching them again. So it's just interesting. It's it's fun to um, it's fun to take in a film like this as an adult like this and whatnot compared to how I saw it as a kid. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so I guess we'll go kind of just towards the beginning of the uh, the movie. You know, um, Cyber explained pretty much the whole movie in the shortest way possible. Now we'll we'll expand it and talk about it. Talk about how cool, silly, and funny it was. And our main character was Bastion. Bastion Bucks. Is it Bastion Bucks? Bastion. Bastion, Bastion. Bucks. Bastion Bucks, a little kid who likes to read books. You don't find too many of those around anymore. But I guess in 84, that was a little different. And uh, and I guess he uh, <clears throat> is depressed at the beginning of the movie. They find him depressed about his his, uh, his mom, right? He's like, I had a dream about mom and the dads. One of the things we know, or Liz notices she was, that the dad, <laughs> he put orange juice in the... Uh, in the blender and an egg. He drank an egg and orange juice in the blender. Has anybody done that before? I've never done that. He's trying to um, uh, raise his testosterone. Is that what that? No, it's not. Is that what that is? <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> no, actually, that was a, a big craze back in the early 80s, actually. Uh, it was, like, supposed to, like, give you protein, and it was an easier, faster way of eating it versus actually cooking the eggs. Yeah, so it was kind of like a protein shake at the time. Yeah, I never noticed that before, but, you know, you kind of, when you start trying to, like, look at the small details, Liz actually noticed that one. I was like, really? He did do, he did do that. Yeah, he put an egg and some orange juice, and that's how he, that's fucking, dis- ooh, that's gross. It's so gross, I want to try it, see if that works, make you stronger or something. Anywho, so, <clears throat> as Bastion, you know, decides to get ready to go to school, on his way to school... You know, there's these little kids, little bullies. They follow him. They uh, run him down, uh, toss him in the dumpster. Remember, he gets thrown in the dumpster. Remember that part. That part comes. You'll, you know, that part uh, is a foreshadowing later on, guys. Anyway, he gets thrown in the dumpster and uh, gets out. Gets chased again. Hides into a like I guess a bookstore that's close by or he just opens a random door is what it looks like and it just happened to be a bookstore with some like creepy old man that he became I wouldn't even say friends with for like 30 seconds right right Jeff you saw that part right Jeff you saw this movie right yeah yeah yeah. they they bonded very quickly it was very very odd but okay you know 84 things were different back then you know what's up Miguel how's it going my grandpa used to put an egg and banana shake or orange juice. Okay, well, then I guess it's a common thing. I'm just, I never, never had that around my household. Makes it frothy. What? Whatever that word. <laughs> frothy? I'm sure Jeff has used that word a number of times. Frothy? Frothy? Nah, that's not really one of my words. Frothy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't look yucky. So, okay. So, going back, you know, the, he goes in there and the guy's like, oh, you're looking for the arcade where they make the pew, 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 pew sounds. And he's like, I don't do that stuff. I read books. And it starts naming a couple of books that he has. Do y'all remember some of the books? Is that right? Treasure Island, Treasure he Island. said. Uh, I believe he also said uh, Mice and Men. He said a whole bunch of like classics. I feel like he said 20,000 Leagues Under yep. the Sea. And yep. and uh, Liz, uh, I remember this one because Liz said, oh my God, that book is so boring. The Last of Mo- the Mohicans. Mm-hmm. Last of the Mohicans was one of them. That's and, a classic. Yeah, it is. And I guess the, when when he read uh, when the little boy told that old man all the books that he has that old man got some type like a hard on for that he was like oh you read books eh? 
hey, you know what? The last of the Mohicans, I'm going to write it down right now. That might be my pick next time. Oh, the, oh yeah. That's a good movie, too. Absolutely. Turn around. Take a look at me. I have to look up the lyrics, actually, because I don't remember. Innocence. Something, you know something what's actually funny about that song is that they sing it in Stranger Things, if anybody's seen season four yes, of or course. three of Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, they do. Does anybody know who the singer of this song is? I don't. How about you, Jeffrey? No. So check this out. So the guy that sings this song, it's a guy, along with an, a, a, a gal. Uh, he was actually the main, like, he got all the credit for it. She really didn't get any credit for it, but she was a part of the song. She was in the chorus with him. Uh, but his name is Lamelau. He's a British singer. He actually originally was with the group Kajagugu back in the 80s. He was their lead singer for three years. And then he got kicked out uh, right before he made this song because he was going to go solo. And he actually, when he went solo, he went to do this song for this film. And it actually charted uh, over in uh, uh, England and over here, like top 10 uh, of the 100 top charts of all songs in 84. Really? Mm -hmm. That is pretty interesting, to be honest with you. Did not know that. Hmm. Oh, guys, by the way, uh, not not you guys that we're, I'm doing the podcast with, but the guys in the comment section that are watching. Uh, I always read my comments through my phone. So if you guys are saying any comments right now, my phone died. I had it. I thought I had a charger that would like help it, but it's connected to the computer, so uh, it's not strong enough. Sorry if I don't respond to anybody. I'm gonna figure it out. I have to put it on the put it on the computer. So okay, so now we're back back to the bookstore with the old man. He gets a phone call. He gets a phone call and he's like, "Oh well, uh, you know what? Let me rewind." He's like, I'm reading a book. He goes, but you just read those books that, you know, that are not, that don't do no harm. They're just fantasy books. And he's like, well, they're all fantasy books. The little kid. And he's like, not this one. He goes, you, you get to go back to, you know, being a kid when you're done reading Fantasy Island and all, all that other stuff. Thank you, this. All right. I knew that was going to work. I knew if I said that on the show that Liz would bring me her phone so I could read the comments. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <clears throat> okay. So he's like, this book is, you know, well, he didn't say anything about that particular book, but he was like, on those books, you go back to being a kid. And he's like, well, what about that book? What do you, what's so special about that one? Then, then the phone rings. Then the old man takes off. He pretends to hide it under some newspapers and you know the kid you know turns out to be a thief turns out to be a thief takes the book but he writes on a note I'll, you know i'll bring it back and the old man's just like over there in the corner like this <laughs> yep. he's looking and then he's like <laughs> yeah uh, awkwardly read my comments about my dad. hold on oh, liz wants me to read Read a comment. Joey, Miguel just told me his gramps owned like a smoothie shop when he was putting eggs in OJ, so he sold that stuff. Hmm. Is that good? I wonder if that's good. Uh, you know, I'm now I'm interested in trying it. <sighs> Maybe it's good for you like in the morning. Drunk Wizard, I'm not ignoring you, buddy. I see your comments, and I appreciate you. But okay, anyway. Huh? Drunk, I think Drunk Wizard is lonely. Drunk Wizard? Drunk Wizard's never lonely. He's always got people <laughs> I'm just him. fucking with balls. I'm just fucking with Drunk Wizard. <laughs> Jeff? Jeff just said Jeff just said that. Anyway, we're going, to, we're going back to the never-ending story. Um, <clears throat> so then he takes a book. And you know, this is the part I thought that was, kind of, that was kind of funny. So I guess he was running late to school, right? He got to school. Class already started. He's like, oh, math class. Shucks. Then he gets the key to the attic. Right? He goes to the attic. He starts reading the book. And then we get introduced to Jeff. What's the what's the, the, the lead character's name in the Atreyu. 
Trey you, Trey you, yes. I was hoping you'd get that wrong, but you didn't. Good job. <laughs> I Trey you. Yeah, very good, very good. And who? Uh, what was the name of the place that they uh, Trey was from? Fantasia. Good job, Jeff. You're two for two. One more for you. <clears throat> who was the ruler of Fantasia? The childlike empress. You have it up on your computer. I know you do. I know no, you're cheating. <laughs> I don't. I just took notes. <laughs> let me turn. Let me see, turn your computer sideways. Let me see. I, I, I know. I'm just joking. Don't do it. Don't do it. Look, I took notes. So I took notes. The okay. Whole movie. Good job. I know. I know. I'm just quizzing you. I, I just... take notes when I watch shit. That's what I do. I have to do that. Very good. So yes, we meet a Treyu, the childlike princess. Who was that? Uh, that one guy that that introduced the princess. What was his name? I, I oh, don't the, think I wrote the his black name. Black dude though. with the white hair. Yes, the black dude with the white hair. I'm not sure what his name was. I don't remember it either. I just remember the actor's uh, first name Moses, uh, but I can't remember his actual name in the film. I don't understand the point of like um, <clears throat> showing like the rock biter at the beginning. With it just to, it was it just to show like his friends that he had the rock biter met those people and they were like friends. At the beginning of it, it was just like a beginning to the story, you know, basically uh, introducing you the, to those characters. Introducing basically. you to those characters, yeah. So then they, yeah, we meet you know, the rock get biter. You know, the rock biter and, you know, teeny, the, teeny weeny. Yep. And then, the, and then the guy with the bat. The guy with the bat. What's up, Joel? Thanks for all the laughs and the angry faces. Appreciate it. I'm not sure. Well, what I was. What I was, what I wasn't like grasping the logic of the whole situation with ro the rock biter guy and everything was his whole like you know issue with like the lack of rocks to eat and shit and whatnot and everything. Now I would think that like if a if a cataclysmic like force like the nothing was popping around like to try and de devastate your your world and shit, like if anything there'd be lots of rocks left. Like once you're done devastating shit, isn't isn't that usually what you end up with is rocks? Like you know. Um... Yes, but I think the. <clears throat> I mean, there's. Well, he, there's wanted, a, he wanted. The, he wanted the tasty rocks. There's, there's a point to the to this. I guess this movie. This movie was very symbolic. For a child movie, really. To be honest with you, I looked up the meaning of it. It had. It was pretty unique. But, um, <clears throat> we move forward. He's in school. I guess lunch happens or the bell rings and all these kids leave. Here's my thing. Like he's, ha it's either the end of the school, right? Like the time to go home and he's still there. Where the fuck is his dad in this whole thing? I mean, he literally stayed there till it was like nighttime and it was like raining. I'm, Cause and, times were different at that time. <laughs> kids were able to stay out and go places. By my, <laughs> My nine-year-old son ain't home. Nah, he's all right. I'm sure he's at his friend's house. It was. It was like that. They didn't have cell phones. Yeah, they didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Well, I guess without jumping too far ahead, we'll go back into it. So then we, you know, we see the ivory tower. That nice image, that pretty imagery of the ivory tower, and then that's when you get introduced to the childlike princess and the black guy with the white hair. And his name um, is Carry On. Carry On. Carry On. Yes. I didn't want to call call him that. CPS didn't give a fuck. <laughs> now, if they would have had my Bakta tank the whole time, J-Rat, they wouldn't even needed the Treyu. Yeah, I guess so. I could have uh, straightened out the childlike princess right, like, real quick with my Bakta tank from, uh, you know, the sad people over there. And, uh, uh, I don't know what that means. You don't know about the Bakta tanks? I uh, yeah, but you said straighten out the princess, and I don't understand what that meant. <laughs> He's ill. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That okay. That's what you meant. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So <clears throat> he's reading this book, and then uh, Atreyu. You know, he's going through this journey. You know, of having a good time. His horse gets. Stuck in that mud water or the that swamp, swamp. The, swamp. the swamp, you know, and then the horse does like is not moving and the horse dies, and, you know. So that pain that a tray you felt is, you know, um, ba Bastion, 
Bastion. 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 He felt that pain too. Bucks. Bastion Bucks felt that pain as well. You know, and then they showed a Trey crying, and then it switched over screens to show Bastion crying. He was feeling the pain. Yeah, I was crying too. I, you know what? That's okay, Jeff. You know what? I was, I was I, crying inside. I was crying inside, baby. I I cried on some movies all the time too. It's all right. Uh, <clears throat> you there's know, so then there's an interesting fact about the horse and the the bogs of sadness. Uh, they actually, it, it took them longer to film this film. They are actually supposed to only do it, it was only supposed to take about six weeks and ended up almost turning out to be a year because that horse that they had to have die in that bog, they had to train it to get used to going down the conveyor to go down underneath so that looking like it was oh, drowning. Oh, okay. The horse took too long to learn it, and so it took them forever to get that horse to learn how to do that. And so that scene there took them, like, I kid you not, they said, like, six weeks just to get that down to be able to <laughs> oh, proceed wow. on with the rest of the movie. That yeah. must have been real annoying for them. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Joel wanted you to know, uh, Jeff, that uh, sand people isn't the correct term. He said it's a Middle Eastern but, oh. but Joel, he's talking about the sand people from Star Wars. So I'm talking about the Tuscans, baby. He's talking about. <laughs> he's not talking about. <laughs> That's funny, though. That's funny, Joel, that you thought that when he said sand people, he was talking about. Yeah, I'm always know, I'm people. always slightly racist. <laughs> Nobody's racist on here, Jeff. Stop it. Okay, so. Horse dies, Bastion, Atreyu cry. Um, I think this is the same part where Gmok. Gmok is the wolf, right? It's Gamork. 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 Yeah. Wow. I really botched that one. Gamork. <laughs> Tell me I, I wa- didn't watch the movie. If it was Gmok, there would there'd be like a space in between the G and the mock. Like a I, dash. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Let's just move on to what I was saying. <laughs> Forget that I botched that one so bad. Gamork. He almost kills him, right? He comes in and and this is where um, Falcor? Uh You skipped the part. Yeah. Did I? Did I skip a part? Now, Gamork, Gamork is like the henchman or whatever or the underling of the nothing. Right. Like, he's sent by the nothing to like yeah. stymie, right, Cyber? Yes, he is. He is, is working there... for the nothing. Yep, but no, you missed the part with Morla, the giant turtle. Oh, oh yes, yeah. there you right. go. Yep. That's yep. why I got you on here. That's why I got you on here, Cyber. Yep, because after Trey loses Artax and the the bogs of sadness, it shows him continue on, and that's when he gets to Morla, who is the ancient one. Uh, mm-hmm. Who, by the way, was voiced by Robert Easton, uh, who was a big voiceover artist at the time. Um, and uh, so they have their conversation. He's asking him, like, questions. And he keeps getting blown off of the tree by his sneezing because he's allergic to humans. Which humans. Good. Then <laughs> after that is when we proceed to what you were talking about. Then that's what it was. Yes. I almost skipped a very important part because then... He t- the turtle tells Atreyu, I already forgot the name even, you just said it like three seconds ago. The big, the big turtle tells Atreyu, oh, it's about 100,000 miles away to see the, what was it, the the uh, oracles? 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles to see the, the southern or- oracle. Southern oracle. <clears throat> and. I guess why, why the, the turtle didn't even care, right? He was like, oh, I don't care. Oh, he didn't even give a shit, man. He was like, uh, Atreus was like, don't you want to die? And, uh, uh, you know, and um, the ancient one, um, Amorla, was kind of like, die? At least yeah. I, I, I feel something. Yeah, the turtle did give, a, give zero, zero dams. Okay, so then that's the part where after uh, he, you know, he kind of loses hope, right? Like he has like a almost a loss of faith. That's when the um, <clears throat> Falcor, I said this name right, didn't I? Correct. 
Falcor comes and swoops him out of the swamp, and that's when Gamork. There it's correct. Gamork almost snags him, too. Yep. And it didn't happen. He got yep. saved. And then they do that whole flying around scene. Ah, <laughs> they just flying. <laughs> They do that for about 30 minutes in the movie. Where do they go at it right after that? Oh, they land. They land somewhere next to those uh, little elves. The two gnomes. The gnomes. They stop at the two gnomes' home because mm-hmm. they're right out like the boundary outside of the Southern Oracle. Right. It was close by. And he had that little contraption where like a, a zip line. Remember the zip line? Mm-hmm. And then the... Uh, <clears throat> a tray you looks at and they show like a knight to see if like the knight was worthy, right? Because you had to be worthy to go through to talk to the oracles. That knight in the shiny gates. armor. You had to go through the two gates. Right. And uh and did y'all notice the tits on those oracles for a kids movie? Did you see that, Jeff? I know you noticed it. I you know, I didn't even actually really notice it. Again, Liz had you know was paying more attention to detail in this movie, but I mean, did they? That they didn't was even... that was one of the complaints by the author of the book, Michael End. <laughs> he actually he he uh, hated that they had done that with his book because he even mentioned he's like you know this is a children's book. Why did they give that those Sphinx such feminine you know pervicious <laughs> figures? They were like that. and they weren't like. It's not the fact that they were like big tits. They like even put the nip on it and everything. So, you know, they went all out, all out on that one. They, they should have had well, a penis. It was a German production, so. <laughs> they, they should have had a penis on one of them with the tits. Well, it's a good thing they didn't. I mean, I'm surprised they got away with the tits. I don't think that that would work for sure. Plus, nobody wants to look at one of those. They're ugly. No one wants to see that. Everybody loves ch- chess, <laughs> chess, GGs. <clears throat> anyway, oh, that man. night, that night tries to. <laughs> Liz is like that. Uh, all right, you're done. <laughs> um, that night goes through, and then he gets like zapped right through the eye. They shoot those things to the eyeballs. <laughs> they toast his ass. So I. Uh, <clears throat> And then uh, I didn't understand after Atreyu saw that, that he was like, oh, I'm going to go down there, right? Because he was, like, brave. But then he, like, almost froze, too, like, when he got there. He was like, I'm going to do this. And then I guess after he saw, like, the knight's face was all... He started doubting himself. Burnt, yep. Don't forget, the Atreyu was given the medallion he called the Orin that can guide and protect him in his quest. Well, it was supposed to help him get beyond the boundaries, right? Uh-huh. It was supposed to him get uh, help him go past the boundaries of Fantasia. No? Prove him worthy to talk to the Oracle. Prove him worthy to talk to the Oracle. Is that true? Is that Did I miss that? Yeah, because the boundaries, what you're talking about with the boundaries of Fantasia, that goes, that we're ta- you're talking about farther down the road when, like, um, Gamork or whatever explains to, um, Betray you the reality and like of of like what um Fantasia really is. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of a deep conversation. Mm. It was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, <clears throat> you know, yeah, they, yeah. Right as, as it uh as it kind of goes deeper, like the the um the like the more of the movie kind of like just explains why it's called the never ending story. So then after he gets past that part, then he's got to go to the gate where, or the uh, mirror where it's like himself or his, his inside himself. Cyber, do you remember that part very well? Yep. Can you tell me so, about yeah, it? Yeah, he, he gets through the, the first gate. He, he basically realizes he can do it, runs, jumps out of the way of the lasers, and then he starts uh, <clears throat> basically flashbacks to the, the gnome elves. Uh, who, by the way, one of them, the actual the female actress that was one of the the little people there, actually was Patricia Hayes, who we would later see on in uh, Willow a couple years later as oh. Gwenda, the oh. the uh, witch that helps Willow out at towards the end of the film. 
um, that who has to be changed from the the creature into the human woman again. Uh, that's that same actress. She actually ended up living till 1998. She was 90 years old when she passed. Oh, um, didn't know that. She uh, she actually was a big actress back in the 60s and 70s and even the 50s and stuff like that. What was her uh, name? She was Patricia Hayes. Patricia Hayes. Okay. okay. And uh, so they go back to those two, and they're like, now he has to get past the mirror gate, uh, the southern, the uh, northern article or something like that. And uh, he goes, he, he sees him, shows him walking through like almost like winter and like it's snowing and ice and stuff like that. And he gets to the mirror and he gazes in at it and he sees kind of himself and it goes back to Bastion again too. And it shows him kind of looking at himself too. And then as he, as he goes back to Atreyu, played so beautifully by Noah Hathaway, he starts to go through the mirror and ends up. Uh, at the actual full oracle where he ends up talking to the oracles and talking to the oracles <clears throat> jeff you remember what the oracles uh told to you how to save fantasia yes they told him that he needed to go beyond the boundaries of fantasia to find a human child um you know who who would be able to give the um childlike princess or empress a new name and that new name would free her from her illness or whatever and whatnot and, and restore fantasia back to its former glory without the nothing and all that going on that's right that's exactly correct and then the oracle started falling apart after that yeah because right? the I... nothing was like the nothing was like inhiliating the whole you know everything and from that scene forward, um, <clears throat> I guess they take off again, right? With the uh, with Falcor, right okay. after that, take off with Falcor, and I guess the nothing yet. Um, <clears throat> I guess everything was okay, but then the nothingness started like um, disrupting more of everything, and then he falls off. Correct. Falls off into that like ruins area. No, that well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. He loses the medallion as well. Yeah, he does. Loses the medallion. Yep. And, and that's he, where he actually, that's the, where we then end up with him with um, Gamork. Gamork. Um, I, <clears throat> one of the things that I read is really interesting. So, like, when he's walking through those ruins, you know, he sees, like, the scenes of, like, mm -hmm. the, the different parts of the story. So, this is a good um, way that they've mentioned that what that means is, that this has happened before. So mm -hmm. all those things are things that have already happened and it's a, it, he's, he's doing it again, which means that it will happen again after this, which makes it a never ending story. It's like the matrix. Pretty, like yeah. the, it was like the matrix. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. It was, a, it was very interesting how they did that. When I looked it up, I was like, what is that? Why, why did they see all the different pictures? But, they did a great way of explaining that. And that's when Gamork was talking about, like, uh, he works for the nothing. He was sent there to kill. He, the, the warrior there to stop stop the nothing. Uh, but the nothing was, like, symbolism for, like, uh, like what was it, like, greediness and manipulation and human the loss, of, the loss of hopes and dreams. The loss of hope, hopes and dreams, right? And then... Uh, <clears throat> And then they did that really quick scene. Well, 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 before that, you know, he was like, uh, uh, he talked about the medallion to Gamork about, you know, oh, I lost the medallion. Now I can't go past the boundaries. And I didn't understand, though, when he was like, you know, Fanta Fantasia has no boundaries. You don't you need you don't need that, you know, so I didn't understand that point of it. But. Well, that goes again, Joy. That goes, or Jay Rand, That gets into the whole, the whole explanation by Gamork of the fact that the never-ending story is not just like this replicated, you know, story that that, that you know continues on and on the cycle. It's also literally like a manifestation of um, that represents humanity's imagination, and is thus without boundaries. Because when you think about it, um, imagination has no boundaries. Imagination has. That's right. You know what? Thank you, Jeff. That 
that makes a lot of sense. Imagination has no boundaries. Wow, are you surprised like I am, Cyber? Cyber, about that one? That was a pretty good no. one. No, he does that. He does that occasionally on the Bleeding Edge. That was good. That was really good, Jeff. <clears throat> and then Gamork jumps out and gets stabbed. He jumps out to get stabbed, right? Yep. Actually, a cool little quid bit. Well, not cool, but I mean, an interesting tidbit for that section. That actual scene was only shot once entire production. And that mechanical machine that they used for Gamork in that scene actually almost killed Noah Hathaway when they were using it. What? It actually, yeah, it actually, one of the claws, when it was attacking him, it actually almost sliced one of his eyes off. Oh, and shoot. that take we see in the film is the only take they took because he got injured at that point. Wow. So what you see in the scene is what really actually happened. He And like when the thing landed on too, it's, it's a huge machine. It was like literally almost suffocating him too at the same time. So <laughs> he, at the same time, he almost like, he almost like died from a collapsed log. He, his <laughs> eye almost got taken out. I mean, Noah Hathaway actually got injured a lot on this film. Uh, the horse that he had to use in that film too, uh, there was a couple of times where it threw him off and trampled on him. Oof. He was injured for a few times during the set. So yeah, so wow, he went and he through was, a lot. He was a young kid to go through all that. Yeah, twelve. He was twelve when he made this. So he my was, golly uh, me, yeah. I did not. I didn't realize that. Wow. And then there, you know, I mean, I guess in '84 he didn't. I really have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's like, you want to be a movie star, right? Especially yeah. over in Germany, because this was filmed over in Germany. Was this real? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Munich. Because Wolfgang Peterson was a German director. And like I said, this was his first English-speaking film that he actually directed. So this was a directorial debut over here in the U.S. Because he actually had originally done the big famous film Das Boot, which was about the submarine movie that was considered a huge hit. Uh, and a couple years prior to this, that was actually considered a part of the Thousand One Movies to see before you die as well. It like was nominated for several awards too. So, yeah. So this was his first English language film. So actually, a lot of this film was filmed over in Munich, and uh, a lot of the dialogue was originally in German. Uh, even though all the actors, majority of the actors were English, they spoke all English, but they actually they uh, had to redub it when they came over here. And also another little cool kid tidbit for you guys is that this was edited for the American version by Steven Spielberg back in 1984. Really? And yeah, he actually edited the U S version of this film and he actually cut out seven minutes of the film to make it more family friendly for <laughs> the U S that's funny. He forgot the tits. <laughs> he was like, you know, he was like, mm, now nah, we'll leave him there. <laughs> And I believe it was West Germany. And you got to remember, this is 1984, so this is before Reagan went down, went over there, and you know, you know, told Gorbachev to tear down that wall and all that. This is back when they actually had the two separate, you know, parts of Germany. Huh. That's a, that's a good fact. Did not, did not know that. And also another little tidbit for you guys out keep there. Keep them coming. Keep them. Just is that? Did you know that this is still considered the most expensive European film made to date? Even back in 1984, usually over in Europe, any part of Europe, if they're film, it actually is a lot cheaper to film than it is over here in the United States. So for a film here, like you would spend like say a hundred million for over there. They would spend like half of that. They would only spend like fifty to forty million to make a film, and still have almost the exact same results as they did over here. But because the Neverending Story only caught was like around twenty five million at the time, that was considered around a hundred million in our time today for like a regular picture. Wow! Because the special effects were so uh, advanced for their time on this film, and because of all the different animatronics they used and all the props and stuff. Uh, it's considered still one of the biggest budgeted European films of all time. And they still hold that record to, to this day, almost 40 years later. Dang it. I didn't know that. 60 That's million. Good. They, I've got it listed right here as 60 million projected, but it was 25 to $27 million budget. Um, and the box. Well, yeah. Off, 60, 60 million in the America. Yeah. And so, the box. But over off, in, yeah. German, oh, yeah. German money is different. Of course it is, yeah. 
Um, you gotta exchange, do the currency exchange. That's for, well, I don't know what DM stands for, but it says 60 million. And then in parentheses, it says US 25, 27 million. So I'm assuming the 60 million is what it cost in Europe. Yeah. What's Which cool? was a really high budget for that time. What's up, Drunk Wizard? You're learning new things. That's exactly what I want someone to say. I'm glad you're learning something. That's the whole idea of the, the podcast is that you are learning something about an old movie that you've probably seen 10 years ago plus. Probably more than that. You should go check it out. It's on HBO Max. They even have the never-ending story, too, on there. I was tempted to just watch that one instead and then just know both of them. But I was like, now nah, I got to refresh. You remember that part when, okay, so after he kills that, uh, I don't know if this was before or after that, but the uh, the rock biter, when he was, like, sitting there and he was talking about his uh, his hands. That was before Gamork. Okay. He's like, these hands, these hands look so strong, don't they? He's like, these hands look so strong, but I couldn't hold my friends. <laughs> that was very, that was very depressing. That was like, I was like, damn, you know, and he, and then again, like he says it, like repeats it like a poem at the, after when he's leaving, he's like, Didn't, don't these hands look so strong? You know, it kind of got you like, oh man, I got you right here. And Rock by your, kind of like the philosopher of the film. It's weird, oddly. Oddly enough, right? You know, he looks like the big dumb rock. He wasn't the big dumb rock. It was like a poem. Yes, it was like a poem, Drunk Wizard. <clears throat> okay, so then we end up with nothing, right? Everything gets blown away. And, um, you know, I, I told this too. I was like, you know how they did like the clouds and the, and the lighting and the smoke? That was pretty interesting. I wonder how they did that. Because that looked really cool. I thought it looked pretty cool. I did. Awesome. It's like they they just put like a bunch of fumes and like light bulbs under it or something. I, I don't know, but <clears throat> the ivory tower still survived. The ivory tower still survived, and oh sweet, thank you. <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. The empress is still alive and well, and a tray you, and Falcor make it there and he's like I failed you and she's like simpleton no you didn't and this is where things get really weird I think this is when Jeff was talking about things getting interesting remember Jeff I messaged you and you're like I'm watching right now and you're like shit's going down yeah what part were you at when shit was going down well, I wasn't quite there yet but I mean I know what you're talking about you're talking about when um, essentially Atreyu feels like he's failed and the uh, childlike empress is like, no, you know, you've actually, like, you know, saved me or whatever and whatnot. Like, you know, you found, um, you found the human child, Bastion, um, and he's been following your story the whole time. Like, he's he knows what's going on. Like, and lots of other people have been reading it to watching their story too. They they know about it. You know what I mean? Um, and segue to Bastion giving the child like empress her name and it got really weird right there for a second right because the boy was reading and she was like you know you the <clears throat> you're supposed to bring an earth child and he's already here and he's like reading the book right and he's like this reading and he's like huh and then and she was like all he needs to do is say a name you know he got chased by the bullies in the school into the dumpster and then, you know, he, he, he started mentioning, like, his, his routine through that day. And he's like, <laughs> there's, like, my favorite part of there. He goes, what? <laughs> he, like, freaks out. <laughs> I'm going to have to, well, like, Bast save that part. Bast Bastion doesn't believe this shit. Like, he doesn't believe that, like, the book's he, magical or whatever. And... Yeah, he freaks out at the end. He's like, what? You can't be talking about me. And then, uh, then he starts reading it. And she's like, say my name. Say my name, bitch. <laughs> You know, and then she's like, does that part where she's looking at a tray and then she looks at the camera. Uh -huh. She's like, please say my name. Yeah, that that actress actually, she was the youngest of the cast. She was uh, 11 when she filmed that. She actually was had lost her two front teeth during production, and oh. they actually had to give her false teeth. So she was actually wearing her false teeth the whole time she was filming the film. 
and she actually just uh, developed a lisp because of the fake teeth. And so she had to learn how to talk without the list. So that was the final edit of the film. She had actually mastered not having a lisp anymore. So I thought that was pretty pretty brave. Tammy uh, Stornak, it was her name. You know, she, Rock, Rock Fighter should have just gave her two crack rocks for teeth. <laughs> she would have put those in there. Crack rocks. Yeah. Cracked and, rocks or crack rocks? Crack rocks. Oh, <laughs> Well, we know we know Jeff loves his crack, you know. <laughs> but hey, I got another little tidbit for you guys. Um, yes. The at, at the beginning of the film, when we first go to the ivory tower, when Atreya Bruce goes there, uh, there's actually I... some familiar faces in the audience inside the ivory tower that I don't know if anybody noticed, but you might have seen R two D two, C three PO, Mickey what? Mouse, Chewbacca. No. Uh, Yes, th- because this was a uh, Paramount, Paramount or yeah, Paramount, I believe, uh, or no, TriStar, Sony. So Sony. Uh, at the time, they didn't have like the copyright laws they have today, and mm-hmm. they were able to use other characters from other films around that time. So they actually had throughout the whole Ivory Tower, you you would see in the audience at the Ivory Tower, there were all these different characters from different movies. E.T. was there. Mickey Mouse popped up in there. No. Yes. If I go watch it, you're talking about the, like, the part where... Um, the very beginning scene of going to the Ivory Tower. I'm going to go check that out. I'm going to look at it. I mean, I saw the big Rockhead guys, and I saw the people with the three faces. Yep, you gotta pause it just right to see them, but I'm they a, are there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look for it. I'm gonna go see if you're fibbing on that one. If you're capping, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. I'm gonna go look that up. And uh, okay, so where are we at now? We get the part where he yells out his mom's name. Jeff, you remember his, the mom's name? I do not know. Moonchild. Oh yo yeah, Moonchild yeah. Yes. Moon child. He yells it out right out the window, right? What a weird name for a mom, though, huh? Moon child? I think it was a nickname. I, yeah, that's probably what it was. It was a moon child. That's what the, the nickname was. <clears throat> that was weird, though, how like that kind of tied in. Like, he, like, uh, she was like, he said her, he said the name earlier, and all he needs to do is say it again. He just yells it out in the rain. And then they show that part where now he, uh, Bastion, meets the Empress. They meet. And then she had like a grain of sand. All that was left of her of her kingdom. Then she said that he could have like a wish, right? Like two wishes? Or was it three or is it one wish? Unlimited. Unlimited wishes? Unlimited wishes. Oh, wow, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, because he's, cause he's like... He's like, how many can I have? She's like, as many as you want. Because basically the present, the the thought behind it was that with the imagination, going back to what Jeff said earlier, your imagination is limitless. So that means you have limitless wishes. Ah, so it's the same principle. I get it. I get it now. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. And his first wish was to murder those three kids that chased him. <laughs> yeah. Or get back at them, anyways. He's like, "Get him, Falcor! Eat him!" See now, like space. There, there's no like, um, there's actually no um, uh, laws in terms of like, um, you know, cons- laws of age, age consent or anything like that. Whatnot. It's wide open in Fantasia. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if rock, <laughs> if rock, if the rock monster dude or whatever wants to get down with the childlike princess, or whatever he can. If he what? If the rock dude wants to do what? If he wants to uh, mix it up with the child <laughs> empress, you know, get his rock on. Get his. <laughs> I think Jeff wants to get it on with a child like empress. I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah, the the grown up version. I mean, she is fifty now, so I mean, she's well, well above the age of. You there know, you go, Jeff. Age, you know? There you go. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, oh, go ahead, Cyber. Another another cool little tip for you guys is the the guy that voiced Falcor's voice, mm-hmm. Alan Oppenheimer. 
is a huge voiceover artist that did a whole bunch of voiceovers over the years. But he's most known for being the original Skeletor in He Man, in He Man: The Master of the Universe uh, cartoon series. Classic. Oh. So you're ta- you're telling me that the Lucky Dragon, Falcor. Luck Dragon. Luck Dragon, Falcor, also was the voice of Skeletor. Correct. Nice. I think he also was the voice of the uh, the Rockbiter. He was. He was right. He did. He did yep. both of those voices. What's up, Andrew? You're at the tail end of the podcast, but it's okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just glad you you came in to say hi for five seconds because I know you're gonna x out of your Facebook here, but appreciate you. <clears throat> so okay, so that was like his first wish, right? Was just to. Can you imagine though, like, it, like I didn't know if that was like a metaphor, like if that was in his head. Was that just in his head? Because it showed like the people read and like everybody saw the dragon, or did that dragon actually come out like into his world? It's imagination, you know. It could, it could be real. Could be. What fake, do you, you know? think, though? What do you, what do you think, Cyber? I think it was real. I think that Falcor came from Fantasia and came into the real world because that is proven. In Fantasia, uh, Never Ending Story 2, if you ever watch it. I'm going to have to rewatch it. I mean, I've seen both of, the, bo- both of them as a kid. And I more recently, the new one that we're talking about. Jeff, what do you think? Was that... Oh, okay, well, I guess we kind of talked about it. It was proven. Cyber proved it. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not trying to get too far ahead, but I'm looking at the critical reception... Um, you know, of the film from back then, again, taking into consideration, we're talking 1984 here and essentially, um, so Roger Ebert of Chicago Sun Times gave it three out of four stars and praised his visual effects saying that an entirely new world has been created because of them. A comment echoed by variety. Ebert's co-host Gene Siskel said that the film's special effects and art direction were cheap booking. And that Falcor the Luck Dragon resembled the sort of stuffed toy you'd win at a county fair and throw out when you left. He also referred to Noah Hathaway as a dullard. He said that the film was much too long, even after Ebert pointed out that the film was only 90 minutes long. Joshua Tyler of Cinema Blend referred to it as one of a scant few true fantasy masterpieces. Um, hey, you know what? Um, that's that's very, uh, very complimentary. Vincent... Uh, Camby panned the film as a graceless, humorless fantasy for children in the 1984 review in the New York Times. Camby's criticism charged that parts of the film sounded like the pre-teenager's guide to existentialism. <laughs> he further criticized the tacky special effects and that the construction of the dragon looked like an impractical bath mat. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny, though. <laughs> Yeah, there were some parts where he was flying. It just looked a little silly, like it didn't move. It didn't have a lot of movement. But I mean, what do you expect at that time? You know, um, it wasn't very humorous. The the movie. There was nothing really funny about that movie for kids at all. But it, it was an interesting story. It was an interesting story. It was. Well, and Falcor had a, Falcor had a positive disposition. I mean, he wasn't funny. I mean, he didn't really say anything. Right, he, was, was like plucky, he was like plucky. He was optimistic and like plucky and kind of like, you know. Um, yeah, but there was n- nothing really humorous about him. He kept no. doing that weird eye wink thing where he was like. No, there was no humor in the film at all. <laughs> yeah, it was the, no, there was not. But it's okay. That's fine. I mean, I, I didn't feel the need that it needed to have humor. It was like a. It was a serious movie, serious kid movie. That's okay. You know? Well, I mean, again, we're going way back to 84 here, but I think Ebert, I think uh, Ebert, um, I think Siskel kind of savaged the film because if anything, I don't know how, again, this, you know, it's not 1984 right now. Um, it's hard to try to compare this to like the kind of special effects you see now, nowadays in our films. But um, when the when the guy, you know, the other guy, um, you know, from Cinema Blend referred to it as, one of the scant few true fantasy masterpieces um, of that time. I want to feel like looking back at it as watching it as a kid, I felt like it was like a masterpiece. It was, you know I mean? it is, you it know? was actually, I mean, I seen it now 
rewatching it again, even though I, did, I watched it like about a month ago, honestly, but rewatching it again for to do the review, I thought it was good. Like I, I was trying to see the meaning of like the the metaphorical mm-hmm. symbolism in all of the movie, and I I get it now. Now that I look it up, like oh, what's the meaning of the of the nothing? What was the meaning of the wolf? What was the meaning of the never ending story? You know. All the, a lot of that stuff had a, a meaning to it, you know, like um, just, <clears throat> you know, being able to overcome depression and and being able to rise above that. You know, that's kind of, sim- you know, simplest way to put it. It was, it was pretty good. It's not it was not bad at all. I think that they could have done a better job translating the message in the film overall. I think so. But I think they made with what they had and. I think they did very well with it. I mean, I think if they were to do the never ending story like a remake today, I think they could really make it really good. Oh yeah. I think they would be a a totally different film. It would be nothing like the one. Oh, absolutely. It'd be, I mean, the graphics would be amazing. Um, but you know what you would lose though, because you're going to try to appeal to the people. You're going to lose some of that, that, um, that deepness of it, you know, I feel like you'll lose some of that, <clears throat> that, um, authenticity. Yeah, you will, because you're going to make it ap- appealing to people and kids. that want to see it. So you're going to, you're going to dilute the the movie a little bit. It's going to be diluted, but it doesn't mean it wouldn't be good. I, I don't know. That's just my take on that. I'd still watch it. Well, at an age where, if anything, I mean, um, you know, besides Marvel Studios and superhero films and whatnot, there we had a real we had a real period of, t- of time going on there where all we were seeing was like redos and remakes. You know what I mean? And like, you know, that was like a, a like a, a constant theme. And people were starting to bitch about it. A lot of people were starting to complain. I feel like there are certain films like like this film, for instance, where. If they wanted to do a third movie, I wouldn't want to re- want a remake. I'd rather have them make a third installment. Okay. There already is three installments. Okay, excuse me. Or my bad. Then a fourth installment. The fourth installment. Yeah, yeah I'd rather the third one. Yeah. Third one was with Jack Black in '97 with James Richard from uh, Free Willy. Really? I don't. Why don't yep. I don't remember that. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna have to check that out. Actually, I, I'm gonna watch the second one. I think the second one was actually pretty good too, wasn't it? It was. I thought it was pretty good. I, I mean, you know, for 1991, almost you know, ten years later after you know, since this one came out, uh, you know, bringing in Jonathan Brandis uh, was a was a wise choice. He was really popular at the time, especially with just doing it in 1990, and uh, you know, getting onto Sequest a few just a short few years later. Uh, he he was a pop, really popular at the time, but I mean the graphics at the time they still were kind of kind of hokey. They try to keep it looking a little hokey because that's how it looked like in the '84 version. Uh, but at the same time, though, it's still visually it was still really fun and uh, interesting story. This one also was a lot more closer to the book than the original one was. The Got first you. One was. Oh, okay. Good. A lot of good facts there. Hmm. Didn't know that. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we did a great job in reviewing this one for sure. It was it was good to see the movie. It was actually fun. And I had fun doing this review too. Jeff, you brought up a lot of good points today. I applaud you. Cyber as always on point with your uh your knowledge on the movies and having everything for us. Yeah, I mean, honestly, j Rap, I mean, this is one of those ones where not it's not just the movie itself is only an hour and a half long, but just the way that it's uh, sort of uh, designed or whatever and whatnot, the story is very simplistic to where um, they're, they're really, it's not, it's not the kind of movie where you're going to review it and do it for like two hours, you know? And then as far as like, you know, the other intangible aspects like that me and Cyber talked about as far as the box office, the budget, you know, who directed the film and whatnot and everything. And that whole, you know, those whole aspects, there's not that much really going on with that either. There wasn't anything that's, you know, too out, you know, uh, you know, groundbreaking or, you know, um, yeah. at that point, it's it's going to be kind of a simplistic, you know, review. 
Yeah, and that's okay. It was a it was a good it was a simple movie. It's a classic. And that's fine. That is a hundred percent okay. Absolutely. Anyway, I don't think we missed anything on that movie. I think we covered pretty much everything from from ding to dong on that. Well, right, Jeff? Uh, Cyber? What do you think, J Rat? What, didn't we mention was the last week of the week before we talked a little bit about the the concept of maybe doing like a like a, a public like fan like um like choice type thing where we where we put we maybe we, we did like polls or something maybe and let yeah yeah let well people pick the movie for us I, I did so so if we're gonna do that drunk wizard's been asking me to do the the craft he's been asking me to do the craft for like a month already. If I am going to do one based off of suggestions, I'm going to have to do the craft because he's been asking me. And if you guys want to do one on the craft, then we can do one on the craft. That's just if we're going to do that because that was on the suggestion box. It's been like thrown in the suggestion box like every other day or at least every other show. Hey, I love the craft, <laughs> man. I haven't seen it since the 90s. Well, we can do that if you are okay with doing that. What do you think? Yeah, no, I just was wondering, I just was thinking to myself, if we wanted to do like, you know, some kind of open polling, where would we do it? Like on Facebook? I've seen people do it on yeah. Twitter. Like, I mean, I could do a, like a, a poll on Facebook. I could definitely do a poll on Facebook, but I don't know if I should do like a, uh, have a list of movies. We could, I could put like three movies and then I could do a poll on that. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Let's do that. We do a poll on that. That'd be the way to go, I think. Yeah, do three or five movies or something like that. Okay, I think so. And I already got the phrase I'm gonna put. I'm gonna do it like one of the posts that I already do, and I'm gonna put like the movie covers on each, like three movie covers, and I'm gonna be like, "Which movie do you want us to ruin for you?" And then I'll let everybody pick. And I think that's yeah. the way to go. I like that. I mean, I'm 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 noticing a lot of other creators. Like, I'm looking at their polls and stuff like that that they're putting up on different platforms and whatnot. I like and I I like some of the what they're doing with it and whatnot. Yeah, you know? and, and and I welcome you guys to do the same thing too. If you guys want to, you know, put it on your on your social medias and share it, and see what you what kind of feedback you guys get on that, then you know we can add them together. You know, you get you know a certain amount on one movie, and it's more on yours than it is on mine. You know, and it adds up more to something else. We, we do that. Absolutely. All right. Well, then we'll come up with some movies for next Monday. And technically it is uh, True Knowledge's turn to pick the movie. But we'll do a poll on some movies that he'll pick. So, you know what, Wizard? We're going to put the craft in that poll for uh, for you. And then Jeff will put uh, two other movies on there um, of his choice. And then we'll see. We'll see what people vote on, okay, Wizard? That way uh, we'll make it as fair as possible. And uh, if it makes you feel better, I'll vote for the craft. So there's already two votes for the craft on there. And we'll see what everybody else picks. All right, guys. Well, I'm ready to go. And I got to work early. And uh, we will see everybody later. Everybody, adios. Hey.